This is Northern Ireland, Ulster, where I was born. It's a beautiful province with a rich, turbulent history and some splendidly obedient sheep. It's also home to great golf and recently, some great players. I came 4,000 miles from Golf Channel to my old sod on a mission. I had a little over 36 hours to fulfill it and I would travel by airplane, Thank you for by boat, by car, and sometimes I'd just have to hoof it. And this is one heck of a place to play golf when the wind is blowing. Along the way, I'd have the chance to see some of my family. This is very um, alarming. Yeah. <laughs> I would touch the earth and caress some poultry. You are one good looking girl, you are. But my true purpose was to find and interview Ireland's latest golfing phenomenon, Rory McIlroy, who during the spring of 2011 electrified the world in both victory and defeat. Right now, I'm not far from where the US Open champion was born and raised. I've got an outside chance of getting an interview with him. I don't know. I'm feeling lucky. <laughs> When I was 17 years old, there's an outstanding chance that Rory McIlroy's parents hadn't even met. But my second job as an assistant pro was right here at Hollywood Golf Club, the place where the current US Open champion learned to play the game some 30 years after I left. The whole golf course is built on like a 45 degree angle back towards Belfast Lock behind me, which wouldn't be a problem if every hole was straight up or straight down, but most of them are on the side slopes. Now, playing off the slant hill that lies, it's tough enough, you know, for a seasoned professional and an athlete like me, but for amateurs, it's just about impossible. Spikes would have helped. If anyone back then had told me that this place was going to produce a US Open champion, I would have blown a snot bubble. Please join me in welcoming our 111th US Open champion, David Feherty. Any chance I can get away with it, no? I don't remember any of those people behaving like that when I returned triumphantly from winning the Ulster Championship. Makes me wonder if Rory in his wildest dreams ever thought that he'd graduate from these slanted fairways at Hollywood Golf Club to holding the US Open Championship trophy at Congressional. I tell you, that's one thing I don't miss. No, I know, it's, no, it's okay, I mean, it's- Give me a sense of what it was like going into the weekend at Congressional. With regard to you know the masters that had come before, you know, was there any of you that said, "Oh, here we go again"? You know, there's a chance to screw this up, or did you feel different going in? No, I mean, I never, I never thought to myself, "This is a chance to screw up." This was a chance for me to prove myself, not just to myself, but to everyone else. And it was nice going into that uh, that media room after I'd won on Sunday and just looking at everyone that might have not thought I was going to win and just go, "There you go." You know, so it was nice to prove it to me, also to prove it to other people. And that's really, it was my opportunity, opportunity to say, right, what happened at Augusta isn't, isn't me, it's not gonna be me, and I won't let that define how I play you know, for the rest of my career. And there was some wonderful footage uh, of your dad, who, uh, I mean, he looked, uh, he looked like he was in a different world. It was great to have him there. He's such a positive person, you know, he'd never say anything negative to you at all. And, you know, to have who, the, you know, his reassuring words going into those final couple of days was, it was nice. I, I thought uh, he looked like he might just be on the verge of insanity. <laughs> no, he was, I mean, I thought he was fine. He, I mean, he didn't cry, which I thought it, was... It must have been great to have him there. It was fantastic, you know, especially on Father's Day and, yeah. you know, to, to sort of have the trophy there. And I mean, I didn't get him anything, so... You know, I thought that oh, yes, you best. did. Well, I didn't until then. I thought that was the best present to, to try and get him. So, yeah, it was great to be there. And, you know, hopefully for my next one, you know, my mum can be there as well. Well, what did you do? What was the first thing you did with your mum when you came back with the trophy? You know, she cried a little bit, but it was, it was great. We had a, had a quiet dinner here when I got home um, a couple of days after Congressional and, you know, just sort of reflected on, on what had happened the week before. A little bit different from the dinner that you and I had the Sunday night of Augusta? Yeah, just a bit, yeah. I mean, it, that was, I mean, even though what had happened that day, um, being there with you and my friends, you know, it definitely made it a lot easier just to, you know, to get over it and, and, and sort of, you know, 
take my mind away from it for a little bit. In a four-year period, you've compressed the kind of mercurial success and catastrophic failure and everything in between. What does that mean you know, for the rest of your, I mean, what, what do you aim at from here? You know, it's great, all these experiences that I'm, that I'm going through, you know, from the Masters of the US Open, it's all just being stored in a little bank of knowledge that, that I can use you know, 10, 15, 20 years down the line, which is exciting for me. Hello, mother. Hello, son. How are you? I'm all the better for seeing you. It's nice to play with my friends when I get back home, but golf was always my passion. It was the one thing that I've always wanted to do. Barry and goal here has been magnificent so far. Oof. Oh! <laughs>
maybe Dubai or somewhere like that. But um, you know, for the time being, I'm I'm from Northern Ireland and this is my home. And um, you know, I've never really come across anyone that's that's been jealous or or sort of spiteful against me. So you're not uh, jealous of me, of the fact that I left? That's a bit of a relief. Hogan, he had his secret. Do you have one as well? Yeah. Have you tried counting sheep? <laughs> it's one of the things that we do with sheep here in Ireland. <laughs> here, flossy, flossy, flossy. Okay, doesn't really matter. Dorothy, I have a chicken at home uh, that I feel would be uh, very interested in you. You are one good looking girl, you are. And Frank? Frank is one very, very handsome rooster. Here, flossy, flossy, flossy. Oh! You show him, girl. Little face off? Yeah, yeah. You think so? You want some of this? Yeah, quite right. Go on. Get out of here. Oh, give him one. Go on. That a girl. Dude, are you going to take that? Oh, you are? Okay. And he's out of here. Oh, oh, and she's not done yet? Oh, no. I'll be another girl. Okay, doesn't really matter. Okay, I think moving on. And a pretty average pass there to McElroy, who's had a bad day so far. <laughs> Verity and goal here has been magnificent so far. Oof. Oh! <laughs> Holy! <he's... laughs> I swear, if you hit me in the plums with this. Oh! oh. oh. Hey. Goal! Right, go on. Have a, have a go. You hinted after the US Open that you'd kind of discovered something. Uh, in, uh, in your swing. Hogan, he had his secret. You know, do you have one as well? <laughs> I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure that I have a secret, but uh, I don't know if it's just a feeling that I've found or, or some sort of uh, trigger or whatever it is, but I just, you know, I feel very comfortable with my swing at the minute and very comfortable with my game. And, you know, as long as I can bring that from the range onto the golf course, I'll be, you know, I'll be doing okay. Everyone thinks that they want a life like Tiger's, I mean, the good bits. Do you? Um, I'd, I'd love a, a golf career like Tiger's, definitely. Um, you know, I, I'd, I think I'd find it very difficult if I couldn't, you know, go to the cinema or go to the shops or, you know, that's the things that, that you know, I would miss out on if, if I had a life like, like Tiger's. Do you want to be number one? Because that's what comes with it. Yeah, of course. Of course I want to be number one. Um, you know, uh, the reason that I practice and work so hard is, is to try and become the best golfer in the world. And, you know, I'm, I'm pretty close to that. You know, you never know what can happen. You know, you've said before, you know, that Tiger Woods was your sort of benchmark, your idol. That's, you know, the way you would like to play. Uh, how, how important would it be for you that he gets back into shape and back into form so that, you know, you can pit yourself against him? Yeah, I mean, obviously, it, it would be nice for me to, to go up against you know, one of the greatest players that's ever lived. Um, but I think just for the game of golf, I think it's important to get him back. You know, people, they want to see Tiger Woods play golf. You know, the interest that he creates at a golf tournament is, is like, no, you know, no one else can, can do that. Um, so just to get him back on the golf course, get, get healthy uh, and get playing again is, is going to be important. And, you know, he's got, you know, as he, uh, I think he said the other day, he's, he's still 35, you know, he's still got a, a good 10 years left in him, so... Mm. Well, that means you've got a good 23 years left in you, which That's is actually right, a year yeah. longer than you've been around. Yeah. Mm. Oh, dear. <laughs> ah, Rory McElroy. He's just starting out on his oh. life's journey. My parents are in their 80s and on the downslope of their life's journey. Whenever I come home to Ireland, their house is always my first stop. My mother's grand. Hello, mother. Hello, son. How are you? I'm all the better for seeing you. My little boy. Uh, well, this isn't embarrassing. As sharp as a razor, and she always drags out pictures, videotapes, and records from my misspent youth, which can be embarrassing. David's circumcision. Oh dear. Long time, boy. Nice to see you. My father was in his favourite chair with his good friend Bobby at his side. So, how are you feeling? I'm feeling all right. Yeah. Oh, stiff at the wrong places. That's all. Really? 
<laughs> yeah. In his day, my dad was a funny man, and occasionally he still is. But sadly, like so many of his age, he's afflicted with dementia, and he's sliding towards the cruel pit of Alzheimer's disease. But I'm determined to remember my father at his best. I was about nine years old, caddying for my dad in his regular foursome. He played with three doctors, one of whom was his own personal doctor, Dr. Dignan. And he said to Dr. Dignan as they walked off the first tee, Doc, I'm not sleeping so well these last few weeks. You know, I think you need to prescribe me a sleeping pill. And the doctor said, nah, Billy, you know, you don't really want to get hooked on those. Uh, have you tried counting sheep? Which is one of the things that we do with sheep in Ireland. And my father said, no, 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 I've tried all that stuff. And the doctor said, well, have you tried playing a round of golf in your head? My dad said, no, I haven't tried that. He said, well, tonight, when you put your head on the pillow, imagine the new cut grass, Feel the wind blowing in your hair. I guarantee you, by the time you've played nine holes, you'll be asleep. Give it a try. So my father said, oh, all right, fair enough. Now the following day, the doctor said to him as he walked off the first tee, he said, Billy, how did you sleep last night? And my dad said, you know, not so good, Des, but I played great. And there was no laughter. I'm taking this seriously, I'm nine years old. And uh, the doctor said, really? How did you play? And my dad said, well, I had a tee shot off the first and a six iron on the green and I hold the putt, birdie. Then on the second hole, I had a driver and a three wood just short of the green that chipped in for eagle. I'm thinking, that's a great start. That's three under after two. Then he said, I skied my tee shot on the third hole and I had to hit a fairway wood into the green. I didn't quite catch it. and had it right on the front edge, about 90 feet away, but I made the putt. Now, I can hardly contain my excitement. I'm thinking my dad's gonna break the course record. You know, so the doctor said to him, well, what happened then? My father said, well, on the fourth hole, I got up, I teed it up, and I hit my tee shot, a big slice, over into that spinny of trees, down at the foot of the hill. And he didn't say anything, they walked on. And I'm champing at the bit, as they say here, what happened next? And the doctor did it for me, he says, well, what happened then? My father looked at him straight in the eye and he said, I was awake all night looking for the ball. And right then the light bulb went on, I thought to myself, my father is full of you're always going to upset someone, but I'm just going to have to deal with it. My friends, this is not just a potato. This is a cumber spud. Why don't you uh, serve me a spud, mummy? Mummy. Oh, beautiful. Nice way to finish. Oh, right in the nuts. Oh, edge. right in the nuts. Oh, no. Why is it that happens to me all the time? I'm telling you, it is, that has happened to me so many times and it's not even that big a target. Well, here we are in uh, downtown County Down, if you like, and this is the best place in the world to grow potatoes. It's kind of a sandy soil, and if we just look at one spud plant here, these are, uh, I hope the farmer doesn't mind, you know, if we just, just underneath the surface, there's a new potato right there. Now that, see, if I rub, you can actually rub the skin off this. It's so perfect. Not many people know how to cook a potato either. And you might say, well, you just boil it. No, you don't. To find out how to cook a potato, we need to talk to my mom. So, mom, these are now boiled to where they're tender. Yes. The fork, what, what, what do you do now? Well, now I'm going to drain them. So basically, you've just strained my spuds? Yeah, I have. This is the key. You put them back on the heat, like that. Give it a little shake. And then I put a folded, clean cloth. Preferably Irish linen. That is drawing up the extra moisture that would be left in the potato. Why don't you uh, serve me a spud, mummy? Mummy. See, the potato should just, just collapse. Like that, almost going to a my like that. Mm -hmm. See, now that's quite a lot of butter, I'd have to say. A little garnish. A little parsley. Perhaps a touch of salt. Okay, so that was pepper. I feel like Rachel Ray. Who's Rachel Ray, anyway? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> mm. You see, that's a boiled potato. So with all the stuff you've got going on here, at home, you know, when you get out on tour. What is it that you miss the most? Uh, probably this, just being at home and, you know, seeing everyone I'm close to. 
you know, but you're home for two weeks and you sort of, you start missing being out there as well, you know, so. Yeah, I used to get homesick, you know, sick of being at home. Yeah, <laughs> but um, no, I mean, it's great. What I've, you know, what I've got back here is fantastic. It's great to have the boys up and play a bit of football and to see my mum and dad. You know, just all the stuff that, that you sort of, I, you know, very privileged to have a place like this that you can come and sort of just play around and stuff, so. Yeah. Proud of you, lad. Thank you. Cheers. Couldn't be more proud. Thank you. Come on. Go for a cup of tea. Let's go do something useful. <laughs> yes. The thing I hear most about you is how nice you are to people, uh, how honest you are about, you know, what you've done and, and, and who you are. Obviously, privacy is, is going to become a big thing to you. It's very difficult for you to go back, say, to Hollywood Golf Club because you want to be nice to everybody, but you can't get done what you need to do if you stop and give everybody what they need. You're always going to upset someone, whether you, know, you don't sign an autograph because you have to be somewhere, or you don't take a picture because you know, you've just missed them out. But as long as I keep playing the way I'm playing, you know, it is, it's going to become more difficult, but I'm just going to have to deal with it and, and try and you know, stay the same person that I, that I am. How much are we going to see of you in the United States? Are we, I mean, are we going to see more? Yeah, I hope so, yeah. I mean, I obviously haven't taken my, my membership up on the PGA Tour, so um, they, limit, they, they limit me to, to what I can play over there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I've only played you know, a handful of events this year, and you know, I'd like to, like to you know, go over there a bit more often. Um, I think it's 15 to fulfill your commitment on the PGA Tour, but um, you know, if I can get over there for 12 or 13 events, I'd be, you know, I'd be happy. Well, I'll tell you, it's a, it's a pleasure to be here with the U.S. Open champion. I'm not sure that I ever believed, you know, that it would happen from here, but I have two in a row. Yes. Gramer, you know, from, uh, from Norn Iron. Norn That's Iron. how you say it here, <laughs> Norn Iron. Uh, it's pretty special. Thanks a lot, Rory. Thank you. George Bernard Shaw once said, I showed my appreciation of my native land in the usual Irish way by getting out of it as soon as I possibly could. As much as I love the place in which I was born, I'm coming back to my new home and my safe place. Because you know the truth is, I love America more. <laughs>